Good morning, and welcome to Sunday worship at West River United Church for August 16th, 2020. We pray that this uh, service of worship will be a blessing to you and all of us here, uh, Reverend Barbara, Julie, Norma, and Brian back there on the, uh, on the system to make sure this is recorded properly. We all hope we, uh, our efforts today are, are a blessing to you. Um, in your, um, if you have your uh, uh, network, there is a number of, uh, of important announcements there. If you, um, if you would like to have, the, if you don't have the network and you'd like to see a copy, you can go to our, our website, www.westriverunited.com, that's all one word. And uh, I just want to highlight just a few of them. First off, I just wanted to mention that uh, there's some beautiful flowers here this morning. And, and uh, these glads and uh, the other ones over here. And uh, whoever brought them, we, we really thank you for that. Um, we're happy, we're pleased to announce that um, the Council of the Church has met. And uh, we will be returning to in-person worship services here in the sanctuary three Sundays from now on September 6th. Um, there's going to be a number of rules about this one. We have to do it very carefully, and we will be following all of the guidelines uh, uh, set out by the Chief Public Health Officer for Prince Edward Island. You'll see a lot of them in the network, which again, if you, if you don't have it, it's on our website. And so we will, there's still a few details that still need to be worked out, and we'll be doing that uh, this week, and we'll be making some announcements. But it will involve um, having to register and face masks and social distancing and all of that, as you can imagine. So uh, uh, keep, keep tuned for that, and we hope to see some of you back here on September 6th. Um, the church is having a, uh, a takeout supper. We are going to uh, announce uh, that our lobster takeout supper, and uh, wow, we are sold out already. And thank you to everybody who bought tickets, and thank you to everybody who sold tickets, and uh, a big thanks to the people who are going to prepare that meal. And uh, um, thank you very much, and uh, there'll be... We look forward to a great, uh, great event for everybody. Finally, just to uh, point out that uh, there is going to be a, a new group forming called uh, ReConnect, which is for the college and careers uh, young adults uh, demographic, and it's going to be meeting tonight, um, August 16th at 8 p.m. at the home of um, Andrea Rogers, and uh, weather permitting, but I think the weather forecast looks pretty good. And it's anybody who, uh, if you've been through high school, early university, early career, generally the late teens to, to 20s demographic, um, this would be a chance to get together and just have some, have some fun and laughs and uh, talk about uh, um, really, really important things around a campfire. So if you're interested, uh, uh, call Andrea at 902-628-9436. Uh, okay, anything else, everybody? No? Okay, good. Christ is the light of the world. Christ is the light in our homes. Christ is the light in our hearts. Christ is the light. Please join me in our call to worship. Welcome a celebration of God's love. Come with hearts open and grateful for this love. Come and receive God's love and healing in our lives. Come, let us worship God who is always with us. Amen. Please also join me in our prayer of approach. You have drawn us together this day from a variety of backgrounds, experiences, hopes, and dreams, loving one. May we know your presence and healing love. Open our hearts and our spirits to receive strength, encouragement, and peace. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And together we pray that familiar hymn, for familiar prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much, Larry, for leading us in worship this morning. So, we often think about Jesus as a teacher, but sometimes adults, even Jesus, become the student. And there's a story today we're going to hear later in our scripture that Larry will read uh, for us that kind of shows us this. The tables are turned on Jesus this time. There's a woman who comes to him, and she pushes through into his home, and she ignores all the rules, and she goes straight up to him, and she grabs him and says, please, Jesus, have mercy on me. Heal my daughter. And at first, Jesus is a little rude to her and very disrespectful, but she doesn't care. She keeps pushing through and pushing through, and as he looks into her eyes and sees her face, he realizes that he must have compassion and mercy, and he heals the daughter. And it got me thinking a little bit about how young people are going back to school now, and the teachers, and all the people who are supporting them, and how you have a lot of new things to learn in this difficult time that we're in that's COVID. You're going to be wearing masks on the bus, and sometimes in your hallway, you're going to be in small groups, you're going to have separate uh, groups, I guess. You're not going to be together like you're used to being together. And you have a lot to learn. And we have to be open, each and every one of us, to learn from each other. The little kids can teach the big kids also about being kind. And parents, we're learning from our children as they are learning different ways because of technology. They're helping some of us how to be on computers in a different way. So sometimes learning is fun, and sometimes you just don't want to do it. So I'm thinking about us all as we re-enter into the fall, which is just around the corner, when Larry said almost three, three weeks after today, that's not too far away. So I hope as you're getting ready to go back to school, teachers and students and parents, that you'll remember to be kind and patient with each other. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the ability to learn and to be open to grow. And we ask for a blessing on the lives of all the people in our faith community and in our world and all around so that we will listen and be kind to one another. Amen. Julie's going to play a piece of music for us. If you have your bulletin opened at home or your voice is united, more voices, so you probably want the bulletin, we invite you to sing along.
I love that song. Two scripture readings of scripture today, first from the Psalms, Psalm 133. How wonderful, how beautiful, when brothers and sisters get along. It's like, const it's like costly anointing oil flowing down head and beard, flowing down Aaron's beard, flowing down the collar of his priestly robes. It's like the dew on Mount Hermon flowing down the slopes of Zion. Yet that's where God commands the blessing, ordains eternal life. And a gospel lesson today is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. From there, Jesus took a trip to Tyre and Sidon. He had hardly arrived when a Canaanite woman came down from the hills and pleaded, Mercy, Master, son of David, my daughter is cruelly afflicted by an evil spirit. Jesus ignored her. The disciples came and complained, now they're bothering us. Would you please take care of her? She's driving us crazy. Jesus refused, telling them, I've got my hands full of dealing with the lost sheep of Israel. Then the woman came back to Jesus, went to her knees and begged, Master, help me. He said, it's not right to take the bread out of the children's mouths and throw it to the dogs. And she was quick. You're right, Master. But beggar dogs do get scraps from the master's table. Jesus gave in. Oh, woman, your faith is something else. What you want is what you get. And right then, her daughter became well. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. We give thanks for it. Thank you so much, Larry. We use the message version today, sometimes hearing it in a different uh, way, it, it brings it fresh to our ears. It's, it's one that we know about. Um, but if you're wondering what the more traditional version is, the NRSV, I encourage you to open up your Bible or go online and, and read that. Learning new things can be difficult. And sometimes, like learning new, sometimes we don't like learning new things, especially if, it, if we think it means we are going to have to change. But it seems that change is an inevitable part of life. Change during COVID-19 is even more challenging as we are learning. We can't go back to the way things were. We know that this is our new normal, but even with that said, we must strive to be patient and kind. In the gospel lesson today, we might be wondering, why was Jesus being so rude? Why wasn't he being kind or compassionate? I don't know about you, but it's as if he was a different person. We know that at this point in the gospel, he is tired, but that does not give him permission to speak to the woman as he does. Context is everything. It's always so important. And in this context, it has been argued that Jesus is responding defensively because the woman pushed her way into his private space. He had just taken a time to go away and regather and maybe get some energy back. That she crossed a boundary demanding and calling out, and one of the versions says she shouts out to him to take pity on her and heal her daughter. We know that this woman, in her desperation, is breaking boundaries and shouting out to Jesus to listen to her cries for mercy. Lord, have mercy on me and heal my daughter, she shouts out. Going even further, she invades his space, kneels at his feet, reaching out, begging him for mercy. And yet, he refuses to listen to heal the daughter, and if that is not enough, he is ignorant, disrespectful, and unkind. It goes against everything that we believe about him as a good shepherd who was willing to go and search for even that one lost sheep. Who is this Jesus, we might be asking? I'm in a book study called Be the Bridge, and it is an online course we are looking at, Our White Privilege. The first day of the course, we read that opinion 
does not equate with knowledge. In a nutshell, this means that we have opinions on topics, but it does not mean that we have fact. In this course, we are looking at the many ways we have opinions about topics like race, racism, being prejudiced, and how these opinions form our way of perceiving and acting towards others. Perhaps this is what Jesus is doing in this case. He is seeing this woman with prejudiced eyes. Reverend Courtney Allen Crump in her sermon on changing one's mind writes, and I quote, we know that this woman is risking everything to reach him. She is willing to risk all the social, religious, and cultural norms to receive healing for her, her daughter. She takes a huge risk and crosses the boundary of what was acceptable. She is not deterred by Jesus' lack of response, the disciples' request for her to be sent away, or even Jesus' insulting reaction to her. She believes that her daughter, a human being, a child of God, deserves healing. And because of this, she stakes her claim on and her faith in the boundaryless love and mercy of God. The vulnerable, desperate, bold, boundary-crossing woman not only secures healing for her daughter, she also challenges the scope of Jesus' ministry. What can we learn from this persistence and resistance that she presents in, that, in this story? I think it is that change can happen, and it takes a great determination. Jesus reacts negatively at first, but in the end, something occurs, and he changes his mind. He agrees to listen to her story, to respond to her plea for mercy, to heal her daughter. In the Black Lives Matter and Indigenous Movements for Justice, it is the same cry for help to be listened to, to have lives valued, lives saved, that no more prejudice and racism be allowed, that we learn to change our opinions of embedded racism that affect the way we see people who are different than us based on color, creed, religion, sexual orientation, class, ability. The list is long. It is the same cry that we need to be open to learning new ways of perceiving and interacting with others in the world. It is our duty as Christians to care and love others, all people everywhere, regardless of who they are. And yet, we all know that change and learning is not easy. This story shows us that we can learn like Jesus did to change our mind, and that it is okay to say I was wrong, I made a mistake, that I need to learn more about how to be in the world. Reverend Crump challenges us to look beyond the sanitizing of this story in its attempt to make Jesus, Jesus seem reasonable. Oh, he was tired, he was having a bad day. That we need to see that his initial reaction and, and treatment of the Canaanite woman, the outsider by virtue of gender, religion, geography, was wrong, that his reaction was wrong. Crump wants us to be more interested in learning from what Jesus learned that day through his encounter with a mother willing to do anything to, re to receive healing for her daughter. What would you be willing to do for your daughter, son, mother, spouse, family member? This outsider has so much to teach us about God's mercy and love and healing. And it is for all people, even her, and even those beyond the perceived boundaries, even the perceived boundaries Jesus has for his own ministry, Crump states in her message. It is no different today when we turn a blind eye to the needs of others, to the needs of people who are not like us, people who do not look, think, or talk, or act like us. Just like Jesus did, we get it wrong. We let our opinions make negative generalizations about whole groups of people, often based on misinformation or what others think and say, rather than on knowledge, fact, 
and reason. There is good news to be had because we can learn new ways of being in the world. We can say we are willing to change, to say sorry, to make amends. In this story, it is the persistent woman who helps Jesus to understand his own bias, that her life and the life of her daughter matters. It is the movements like Black Lives Matter crying for hope in our times, calling, demanding, shouting for our attention, for our willingness to say, yes, we see, yes, we want to learn, yes, we have bias, yes, we will work for justice. It is suggested in Salt Commentary that it is Jesus and those gathered who are healed, not just the woman's daughter. They are healed from prejudice, and in that moment, eyes begin to open to the racism inherent in their own thinking and culture and treatment of others. It is Jesus' encounter with the Canaanite woman that changes him, not just in that moment, but it changes the future and shape of his ministry. Reverend Crump writes that because of this encounter, Jesus changes the direction of his outreach and ministry, that after this moment, he sends disciples out to make disciples of all nations or all ethnicities and to all people, to the ends of the earth. His new perspective frees him to respond, to heal, to become again the channel of God's redeeming presence. Dare we be like this woman, to shout and act and work for justice for all people? Dare we be willing to open, to be open to change, to learn? It is holy hard work Crump writes, and we are called to it, each of us in our own corners of the world. It is a call for justice, racial justice, to healing and dismantling every practice and policy that privilege the lives of white people over those of others. I have faith that we can do this holy work, that we can and will learn new ways of seeing the world with insights about what it means to live within our context of privilege. In the online course, Be the Bridge, we learn that this work is not about blame, but about identifying and accepting responsibility to help fix what has been broken. It can be tempting to walk away from conversations about racism and live in denial rather than face our complicity. If we can push through the discomfort, we can work to bring about a more just society and be a source of good in the world. I know that we can do it. I know that we are already doing it. We are open. We can learn. We are listening to the hope and good news now and always that is found in the love and grace of God Thanks be to God. Amen. As a people of God, let us come together in prayer. Creator God, you call us to love and serve you with body mind and spirit through loving your creation and our sisters and brothers open our hearts in compassion and receive these petitions on behalf of the needs of the church and the world we pray for our community our province our country and indeed our world as we increasingly come to grips with the pandemic lord we have learned so much and we are grateful for leaders in health care and in government who have shown foresight and wisdom in bonding us together as we move forward. We pray for our agricultural community, the providers of our food of which, for which we always give thanks. While we enjoy the summer weather for our recreation, we remember that the water of the rain is a life-sustaining gift. Lord, we pray that you will ensure that enough rain will come so that the crops will flourish and people will be fed. We pray for the people of Lebanon, 
and the members of the Lebanese community in PEI as they come to terms with the horror of the explosion in Beirut last week. May we and the entire world community respond to the needs of these people with grace and generosity. We give thanks for the example of the Canaanite woman who saw both hope and healing in Jesus and showed persistence and faith as she called upon him. May we also, like Jesus, learn from our interactions with other people. May we, hold so horrible, may we also hold a firm faith in Jesus, never letting him out of our sight. Life-giving God, heal our lives, that we may acknowledge your wonderful deeds and offer you thanks from generation to generation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, Larry, for the prayer, and Julie for the music, and Norma for the drumming. Spirit, open our hearts. Let us present our gifts and offering for the work of God in the church and in the world. We are grateful that we can continue to do our work, although we are not together. We are together. And our offertory prayer. Oh God, your goodness comes to us in so many ways, and we return our thanks through these gifts. Bless them so that they can be a gift for others. Amen. And I would like to invite those who feel they are able, you can go online to the United Church of Canada's website if you want to make a special donation for the people in Lebanon. O oh, come, O oh, fount of every blessing,
Thank you so much. I hope you sang that beautiful song at home. Jesus' love and compassion has been poured out for you today. Go into the world in confidence, bearing forgiveness and love for all God's people. Go in peace. Amen.